Venezuelan diplomat Alex Saab was acquitted of all the charges against him in Colombia, adding another victory against media accusations against him. The Mexican president Andrés Manuel López Obrador denounced the murder of Lucero López Massa, candidate for major of the municipality of La Concordia in the state of Chiapas. The French army arrived in New Caledonia, an archipelago located in the South Pacific, in the middle of a spiral of violent disturbances that have left at least five dead. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. Venezuelan diplomat Alex Saab was acquitted of all the charges against him in Colombia, adding another victory against media accusations against him. It is worth noting that during Ivan Duque's term as president of Colombia, Alex Saab was accused of politically motivated crimes without evidence. However, the judge in charge of the case determined that the Colombian prosecutor's office failed to prove the accusation during the trial. Earlier in 2021, the Geneva Prosecutor's Office also closed an investigation of alleged money laundering through accounts in Switzerland on the diplomat Alex Saab. It should be noted that while this was going on, he was kidnapped in Cape Verde on orders issued by the United States. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro held a meeting with the youth during the closing of the third Congress of the Bolivarian Student Organization. The president accompanied the youth march against imperialism, sanctions and in defense of the future, which took place on Friday, May 17th. The president was also present during the closing th ceremony of the third Congress of the Bolivarian Student Organization, where he prized the leading participation of the youth and highlighted that the great political leaders of today were born from that organization. The head of state also expressed that Venezuela is a country that forges its youth with the values of participation, conscience and popular democracy. And now we are doing it in style, with your methodology, which is a democratic, participating and leading methodology of direct democracy, of true democracy, of an exemplary democracy, because we are forging the new generations in the values of participation, of conscience, of knowing how to give opinions, of knowing how to set positions, of making decisions. It's the popular democracy. It's the socialist democracy. You are being educated in the democracy of the 21st century and after a developing process from high school to high school. The third Congress has met and all the information that you have sent me has reached me and I know that this third Congress has been a total success, a total success, boys. And I congratulate you. I congratulate you. The Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has denounced the murder of the candidate for major of the municipality of La Concordia in the state of Chiapas, Lucero López Massa. The candidate for the Popular Party of Chiapas, Lucero López Massa, was killed on Thursday night after an attack by armed groups that left six dead, including a child and two other people wounded. For his part, President López Obrador, during his morning conference, condemned the death and violence in several municipalities in the state of Chiapas and said that they will reinforce security in the area with more presence of federal forces. I can tell you that luckily there have been fewer aggressions. Than in other elections. But now there is a lot of sensationalism. It is very regrettable. But they profit from the murders and the human pain. 
In Honduras, the Secretariat of Risk Management and National Contingencies decided to declare a red alert in seven of the 18 departments of the country because of high levels of air pollution due to a dense layer of smoke. The departments in red alert or danger include the communities of Cortes, Atlantida and Colón, among others, while in yellow alert or prevention are Copan, Lempira, La Paz and more. The green alert or surveillance status was issued for the localities of Islas de la Bahía and Gracias a Dios. The alerts respond to the different levels of contamination and try to prevent its negative effects on health, especially in children, the elderly and people with common illnesses for whom preventive measures should continue to be taken. The Peruvian government is under fire from LGBTQ plus groups which have called a protest on Friday against a new decree listing transsexualism as a mental disorder. The government updated its list of insurable health conditions which since 2021 has offered benefits for mental health treatment to include services for transgender people. In the decree, the health ministry describes the condition as a mental disorder, an obsolete term long officially abandoned by the World Health organization. A demonstration has been called for Lima on Friday, the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. With just a few hours to go before general elections in the Dominican Republic, we approached the people of that island nation to find out how are they feeling about the process that will kick off on Sunday, May 19th. Our correspondent in that country, Daisy Toussaint, provides details. The Dominican Republic is just on the verge of presidential and congressional elections, so random people on the streets told us they are concerning issues. For instance, predicaments on health and education, which are the basics. And there's another problem now, food's high prices. Life is very expensive. It is very difficult. But let's hope the next government to be elected on Sunday, May 19th knuckles down to these three issues, health, education and food, food. Let's say crime is not an easy issue. And I can tell you that electricity bill is very high and very expensive. There are many people crying their heart out due to it, as everything is unaffordable. Some people comment their national economy dealt a heavy blow to the poorest, and although they noticed corruption in previous governments, they claim they were better off. Actually, the previous government was a thief, but there were rooms and we managed to live through. Now rooms are available, but people don't know what they are going to do. What's more, the price of salt had never gone up and it went up. Everything is sky high. With the previous one, we were more comfortable and better. The government stole from us. It's true, but there were more rooms and one arrived home with provisions in our hand as they gave them to us. What do the people expect with the next government to be elected? Let's hope for having a stable economy, which is the most important thing for the lower class because when you have inflation or dislocations in prices and in basic needs, the people suffer as it's the only really affected. The electoral process has so far been calm and the population expects the elections to go off without a hitch. I hope everything goes well. I am thinking of the Dominican people's wisdom, and we have to go and vote because it's our duty. And it's the only day that we have the right to elect our authorities. I hope we can all cast our votes to see if we can improve the situation of our country. On Sunday, May 19th, it's up to the people to decide on the ballot who will be the authorities for the 2024-2028 term in what constitutes a celebration of democracy. A 
At least three Palestinians were killed and several others injured in an Israeli airstrike targeting Budej refugee camp in central Gaza and the city of Rafah in the south. Israeli occupation forces shelled the area around Shuhaida Square in Budej, killing one person and injuring others. Two more people were killed and several injured in an Israeli attack targeting central Rafah in the south of the enclave. Local health authorities reported that the number of people killed since the start of the Israeli aggression against the Gaza Strip on October 7, 2023, has reached 35,303 and 79,261. Others have been wounded. A large number of wounded and dead Palestinians are in Kamal Adwan Hospital in eastern Jahabalia amid the Israeli incursion and shortage of medical supplies. The hospital, placed in Beit Lahia, northern Gaza Strip, is facing a draining of medical materials amid the growing number of Palestinians in need of medical care. The Israeli army assured on Friday that renewed fighting in Gaza's northern town of Abalia was perhaps the fiercest in over seven months of war. Before the war, Havalia was home to the largest refugee camp in the Gaza Strip, with more than 100,000 people packed into 1.4 square kilometers. We are working at the minimum level to provide health services at Kamal Adwan Hospital, and this is a result of the siege imposed on the health system in the northern Gaza Strip in Gaza. And in light of the ongoing incursion in eastern Jabalia, large numbers of injured and killed have arrived, and this of course drains our medical consumables. We have appealed and continue to appeal to the international community to supply us with the necessary fuel. But what has been sent is a very small amount of fuel, barely enough for a few days. In Bahrain, the final declaration of the 33rd Arab Summit held in Manama, its capital, condemned its the strongest terms the brutal crimes of the Israeli occupation army against the Palestinian people. The text demanded an immediate solution and a permanent ceasefire in Gaza, as well as allowing the entry of humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. The statement repudiates the Israeli aggression on the city of Rafah, which is home to more than one million displaced people. It also demands the immediate cessation of the Israeli aggression and the withdrawal of the occupying forces from all areas of the Strip. Moreover, it reiterates the categorical rejection by the Arab countries of any attempt to forcibly displace the Palestinian people from their lands. In Indonesia, hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters gathered in the capital, Jakarta, outside the U.S. Embassy to mark the 76th anniversary of the Nakba, when around 760,000 Palestinians fled or were driving from their homes during the creation of Israel in 1948. It is stated in our constitution that any forms of colonialization shall be eliminated, but in this modern era, we still can see a real colonization happening in Palestine. So as a people of a nation with such constitution, it is demanded for us to support Palestinians. Today, the genocide that is still happening in Gaza is a continuation of the project by the colonial Zionists. Today, the military aggression of the colonial Israel is still happening in Gaza on land, sea and air. We have a final short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Constantine's coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Final short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. The French army arrived in New Caledonia, an archipelago located in the South Pacific in the middle of violent disturbances that have left at least five dead. Authorities said thousands of security service reinforcements were deployed in order to increase powers to quell violence in the French territory of New Caledonia, which has long sought independence. They also reported that the number of violent incidents recorded in the archipelago dropped slightly on Friday after the French government imposed a state of emergency. In addition, the top French official in the territory, High Commissioner Louis Lefranc, also announced strict measures under the state of emergency declared by President Emmanuel Macron. 
This social outburst took place after the French National Assembly adopted last May 13th a reform of the island's electoral roll that would allow residents of the overseas territory the right to vote. Opponents of the reform organized protests which turned into riots, leading to clashes with security forces, burning of vehicles and loading, looting of shops. The protesters claimed that France does not take into account the identity of the inhabitants of the archipelago and condemned the fact that outside decide for them. French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal met on Friday with parliamentary committees to discuss the crisis and unrest in the French Pacific territory of New Caledonia. The number of violent incidents recorded fell slightly on Friday after France imposed a state of emergency following protests over electoral reforms backed by the Paris government. Some 1,000 security officers with enhanced powers were deployed to quell the unrest in the archipelago of about 270,000 people whose indigenous population has long sought independence. French authorities in New Caledonia said five people, including two police officers, had died since Monday. The 27th edition of Cuba Disco, the International Music Industry Fair, will be held in Cuba until May 19th with the participation of Cuban and international artists. Sublime moments have been offered by the biggest celebration of the Cuban recording industry with a program that has gifted us diverse musical proposals, brainstorm sessions and the award gala for sound excellence that took place at the Morty Theatre in Havana. Various artists have performed on the stage of the Avellaneda Hall of this cultural institution, such as Grupo Moncada, Orquesta Aragón, Maria Victoria Rodriguez, Tel Mangulo, Dilson Hernández, Colectivo Colombia, Sexteto Tabalá, La Guarachera, La Diva Kenny Manak, Muñequitos de Matanzas, Jacobo and the Colombian group, La Mamba Negra. The event's proposal also includes the Pavilion Cuba Stages, the Cuba Disco 2024 International Symposium with the first line of business meeting in the Mayo Hall, and the Pergola that will host a space called Feel the Music. Later on, the central stage will host countryside musical poetry improvisers from the Saiz Brothers association, along with Colombian guests Tel Mangulo and Dilson Hernandez. The cultural house of Alba opened its doors to the musicality of Ariel Barreiros, John Maya and his group from the Basque country and Ismael de la Torre, while the theater hall of the National Museum of Fine Arts will present Jacek Maipsano and his group in the company of Cintas of Portugal and the Tempo Quintet. As a part of his journey, Cuba Disco has spread to several venues in the capital, such as the Miramar Café, the Media Gardens, Boulevard 66, Arte Havana, and La Tropical, as well as the cultural centers in several municipalities. Well, the National Council of Houses of Culture thanks Cuba Disco for making us participate this year in this great party of the Cuban musical records from the communities and its system of houses of culture. We started last Sunday 12 in the House of Culture of Central Havana, Joseito Fernandez, with the usual artistic encounter of Judith Gonzalez, and we had the group Ensemble Vocal invited. We will also enjoy a nice day on Friday 17th at the Cultural Technological Center La Corbata with the best of the amateur artist movement and we will close with the concert of Lionel Limonta and Azúcar Negra. We also have on the 18th at the House of Culture Olga Alonso in the municipality of San Miguel del Padrón and at the House of Culture Carlos Burboa in the municipality of Cotorro, thanks to the musical project Closer to You, artists such as Camerata Romeo. All these concerts will start at 6 p.m. Also on Saturday 18th at the Pavilion Cuba, we have the Watek Infantil. Since Cuba Disco is dedicated to countryside music, and on Sunday, as the final day of Cuba Disco, we will be at the Casa de la Cultura Rita Montaner of the municipality of Guanabacoa, with the group Trio Móviles, with musicians Yvette Betancourt and Mabel González. The contest select winners in different categories such as heritage, academic, instrumental jazz, song, current dance music, fusion, urban, audiovisual, and general.
Bolivia's Culture and Tourism Authorities presented a tour that includes three museums with the aim of promoting cultural tourism. The route of tourist museums towards the bicentenary aims to offer visitors a wide cultural offer and encourage them to stay more days in the country. The three museums that make up the route are the National Museum of Art, the National Museum of Ethnography and Folklore and Ines Cordova Hill Imana House Museum. The single ticket will be sold in the museums themselves and also through travel agencies and operators so that they can include visits to the museum in their tours. The initiative is also part of the celebrations for the bicentenary of the founding of Bolivia in 2025. The Louvre Museum prepares for the 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games in Paris. The museum will host a major exhibition dedicated to sporting art on the occasion of the third celebration of the Olympic Games, together with the Paralympic Games from April 24th to September 16th, 2024. The exhibition Olympism is a Modern Invention and Ancient Heritage is composed of 120 pieces, among which are paintings, drawings, sculptures, and goldsmith work. The public is invited to discover how the first modern Olympic Games were conceived at the end of the 19th century and what their iconographic sources were. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website at teleserenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.